right, 832 right now and subway commuters in the Bronx concerned about crime following two deadly incidents in less than two weeks. Yeah, NYPD detectives are also searching for suspects in a double shooting in Hunts Point. So joining us this morning to discuss the rise in gun violence in the Bronx is Borough President Vanessa Gibson. Good morning. Thanks for Thank being you. with Good us. Thank you. Good morning. So let's start by addressing uh, the incidents on the trains right now. So police have released photos yes. and the identities yes. of the suspects. What's the latest there? So the active investigation is ongoing. There are three individuals that we believe are responsible for the horrific shooting of a 45-year-old resident of our borough. And my heart goes out to his family. And we will be working with the family to find out any immediate needs that they obviously have. But I think it begs the bigger issue of why individuals and New Yorkers are oftentimes carrying weapons uh, and on subways. Uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, commuters are going to and from work, and you don't expect there to be a shooting on your subway, on a moving train, and that is unacceptable. So we have to talk broadly about safety across our city and across the Bronx, but specifically what's happening on our subway. And we now know that transit officers will have 12-hour shifts. There will be more of a police presence, which is great. Uh, they are implementing cameras all across the entire system, but people truly need to feel safe. They have an expectation, and they are a part of the city and they deserve to be safe. Yeah, I mean, and, and part of the reason we have a better idea of what exactly happened are because of the cameras yes, in the station and right. on the trains. Do you happen to know how many stations in the Bronx have cameras? I don't have the exact number, but I know it's still ongoing. I can yeah. get an update from NYPD on the installation and, and the are, MTA. That's going, they're going to be installed hopefully Absolutely. by the end of this year. Yes. Okay. Now, there was also a shooting on that same night in Hunts Point. Mm -hmm. uh, where Two are people. we with that? Active investigation as well. Two individuals were shot. Uh, they are currently hospitalized with minor injuries and we're praying for their healing and strength. But another reminder of the just plague of violence, the proliferation of guns. There are too many guns in our communities and too many disputes and conflicts that unfortunately turn violent and deadly. And yeah. that's not acceptable when it's not normal. Do we have increased police presence in the Bronx and do you feel there should be more? So we have increased presence across the borough from all of our 12 precincts. We've been working closely with our chief, Ben Gurley, and chief Keon Ramsey on deployment on troubling areas where we have hot spots mm -hmm. and pockets okay. of crime looking across the borough. Um, and obviously making sure in the evening hours there's greater enforcement. We've done a lot and we want to continue to do more. Every time there's a class that graduates from the academy, we do get uh, an allotment of officers, new officers that are on routine uh, patrol uh, and going around our communities and we need to do more. But I also emphasize again, police presence is important. Working with the NYPD is important, but we also have to make sure that all of the critical services that our borough needs we're getting and we're getting our rightful share. Well, you're talking about some of those services, right? And the increase NYPD, all of this possible because there are less of a budget cut that mm -hmm. we expected from the mayor, right? He Correct. rolled back some of those cuts. So when you look at what exactly is happening in terms of the budget, what are the services you do need that can now be made possible because the bu budget cuts are not as severe as once expected? So I want to make sure that when it comes to city services from sanitation, parks, transportation, uh, that those agencies are protected um, from the next layer of cuts that we're now not going to see, which is great. Education took a huge cut yeah. when it comes to after school, when it comes to Cornerstone, uh, recreation programs, teachers, making sure we have all of the support staff in our district and public schools. That's important for us as a borough. Uh, making sure that we have the summer programs, we're getting ready for the summer. Summer youth applications are currently underway. We want to protect youth programs and recreation centers because we know that is truly programs that our youth need to be successful and to be safe. Are you confident without the cuts that all those things you just mentioned will actually happen? Yes, but I still want more. <laughs> okay. I'm always asking for more. I right. aim I aim very yeah. high because I think the Bronx has often been shortchanged and left behind, and we always need more because our population is growing. And when you're seeing so much violence among young people, the answer are jobs. These young people need jobs, they yeah. need programs, they need to be active and productive in their communities, and that is absolutely possible. The last time you were here, you talked about the need for more building inspectors because yes, of the I building did. collapse. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, these budget cuts... Is that affecting that? And and then also while you while you answer that, what is the latest there? Because there were fines uh, on one engineer. Yes. So the engineer was fined ten thousand dollars with a two year suspension that he agreed to because of his negligence in the December eleventh partial building collapse in Morris Heights. And I'm grateful that that happened. And we're now double checking all of his work. He owns 300 other buildings mm -hmm. throughout the city of New York and we must have a better standard when it comes to local 11 
compliance when it comes to overseeing our engineers. Yes, they're certified, but they also need to be double-checked as well. I'm glad that the Department of Buildings um, is not facing cuts because I have been on them, Commissioner Otto and Deputy Mayor Joshi, about the 300-plus vacancies that were at DOB mm -hmm. and making sure that we fill those vacancies and we add more when it comes to inspectors. When people call 311 and they say, my building is shaking, I hear construction outside, I want to know what's going on, we have to respond to that and we cannot overload our existing uh, infrastructure of in inspectors when they're now getting more work mm -hmm. that this is an aging infrastructure in New York City these are old buildings and we want to make sure that people feel safe after that December 11th partial collapse we know that many more residents felt unsafe and that building in particular in itself yeah. had 100 violations right. Wow, certainly mm -hmm. I do want to end on a positive note here okay. Bronx week is I love coming. to end on positive notes yes and you have a special <laughs> announcement you're making this morning right here about Bronx week yes okay what is so Bronx Week is uh, Monday, May 6th through Sunday, May 19th. And this year we are announcing our People's Choice Award once again wow. for 2024. And this year's focus is going to be on health care heroes, sheroes. So we're asking Bronxites to nominate their health care hero, their health care shero, who represents the essence of being a first responder. And we will have a competition. And whoever gets the most votes will be our new uh, Bronx Walk of Fame healthcare inductee. Ah, That's very wonderful. Nice. And where again can folks nominate that? More person? information: www.ilovethebronx.com. That's <laughs> easy enough, right? right? Easiest website. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Always it was a pleasure. Yes.